Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video I want to talk a little bit about continuous functions. A little bit later on we'll also look at how you can find where a function is continuous and where it is not continuous. So if you've never heard that word before, uh, continuous, and you're kind of curious about what it means, it has a little bit to do with our function and whether it has any gaps in it or any breaks. You see, if you have a function that has no gaps or no breaks, then you can call it a continuous function. However, if you have stuff like holes or, or giant leaps in the, the, the graph itself, then you can say it is not continuous. Now many times we do want to look at the function as a whole, but oftentimes we're just interested in little pieces of the function, and it is possible for a function to have many breaks and gaps but still be continuous on, say, certain intervals. And also, when we get into calculus, we can be a little bit more precise uh, as to what it means to be continuous without just saying, well, it has gaps or holes in it. So let's look at the definition now that we know a little bit more about limits. Uh, a function is said to be continuous at a point c if the limit as x approaches c of that function is equal to f of c. Now this is kind of a weird definition, so let's kind of explain what's going on here. So what we have here is that we're looking at the limit of a function as x is approaching a value c. And what we're seeing on the right side is that we're simply plugging that c value in. Now the reason why this makes sense for a continuous function is, you know, think about a function that has no breaks or gaps on it. As you're looking along your axes and you're approaching, say, this c value, what you hope is that the value of the function is approaching some sort of value and that you can get that same value simply by plugging it into the function. So that's kind of what this definition is saying that if you're interested in the value of the function and the limit happens to equal just plugging it in then you know it's continuous at that point. Now with this definition, you can say a few different things, or at least be able to test if a function is continuous at a point or not. Uh, in fact, you can really check these three things. One, you can see if, you know, just plugging in the value uh, into the function, if you actually get something back. So does f of c actually exist? You can also check to see if the limit exists as x is approaching that c value. And lastly, if you get these two things that at least exist, then you want to make sure that they agree. So do you get the same value for each of them? And if you can say yes to all three of these, then you know that the function is continuous at that point. So now that we know a little bit more about continuous functions and their definitions, uh, let's get into some examples and see where things are continuous and where they're not continuous. We'll first do this with a graph, okay? So if I was looking at this entire graph, uh, you know, at the entire thing, I would say, you know what, this thing is not continuous. I can see that, yeah, it's got holes, it's got gaps, it's got a few other things. But what if I just wanted to describe the pieces where it was continuous? Well, let's see if we can do that. Notice how on this little section right here, as long as I don't go to that little open circle there, that this section has no breaks, no gaps in it. It fits the definition because no matter what point I choose in here, I can get a value the limit exists at that value, and the limit exists just plugging it in at that point. And I can do that for every single point on that little interval. So we can say that this thing is continuous from, say, negative infinity all the way up to the whole at negative 4. Now, that's not the only place it's continuous. Also, between negative 4 and 3 would be a good interval. So negative uh, 4 up to positive 3. Okay, here we have one of those huge leaps. Let's see why it's not continuous there. So the function value exists at three, you know, I, I get the value of two, uh, but it looks like the limit doesn't exist because the left limit and the right limit do not agree. So because uh, the left and right-handed limits uh, do not agree, you know, this is not continuous. All right, but what about after three? After three looks pretty good. So use our little union symbol and put on one more interval. So from three, to infinity. So on these intervals right there, the function is continuous. At these individual places, not continuous. Let's see if we can do this just by looking at uh, the equation itself. 
So where is this function continuous? Well, it's a little bit more difficult to tell because you can't actually see those breaks or gaps, but you can essentially go through the test process and say, okay, are there any values where I try and plug it in and I don't get anything? Uh, are there any places where the limit doesn't exist? You know, those are the places that we really want to key in on. With this one, notice how we're dealing with a fraction and we're always worried about dividing by zero. We can't divide by zero. And if I try and use an x equals one, that's a problem. Let's see, are there any other problem areas? Well, I don't see any other fractions or anything like that. So I know that uh, f at one does not exist, okay? So I know it is not continuous at that value. Everywhere else though, I think is okay. So we would say that it is continuous from negative infinity up to one and from one to infinity. Again, looking at it, the equation is a little bit more difficult, but you're essentially looking for places where the function does not exist, or where the limit doesn't exist, or where possibly those two things do not agree. Let's look at one more. All right, this last one is a trigonometric one. Our function is four over the sine of two x. And again, we're kind of curious, where is this thing continuous? Where is it not continuous? Well, since we're dealing with those fractions, again, we're curious, where could we possibly get a zero in the bottom? You know, what would cause a problem down there? Well, since we are dealing with sine, we can explore this a little bit. So sine of two X, where on earth does it equal zero? Well, our angle on the inside could be a variety of different things. Uh, it could be say zero, could be pi, could be two pi, could be three pi, and all the way down the line. Uh, you could also start including some, say, negative angles, like negative pi, negative two pi, and negative three pi, and all the way down the line there. So if that's what the angle uh, you know, would be a problem, we can divide everything by two and see the sp specific angles that uh, will be a problem uh, in our function over here. So zero over two would be zero. Then I guess we have plus minus pi over two plus minus pi, plus minus uh, three pi over two, and all the way down the line. So at each one of these points, if I were to try and plug them into the original, I'd get a zero on the bottom and my function would not exist there. So I know that it is not continuous at every single one of these points. That's a lot of them. Uh, let's see, anything else in there? Well, I don't see any other fractions or anything else that will give me a problem or any place where the, the limit does not exist. So here's what we'll say. Uh, this is continuous at all points except, and we'll go ahead and list out all of these problem angles that you know we can't have, except when x equals zero plus minus pi over two plus minus pi plus minus uh, three pi over two, all the way down the line. So remember that in general, uh, a function is not continuous if it has a hole or a gap, something like that, and that there is an actual mathematical definition that uses the limit to test that out. All right, if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.